Hi everyone, my name is Carter, and today we'll be discussing how to make an antibody DNA conjugate with the cleavable disulfide bond in the middle so that you can release the antibody from the DNA. This is a really useful technique for immunopcr. I'm following a paper by Van Buggenham et al. from Nature Scientific Reports. The link is in the description. In this paper, the goal is to create a series of antibody DNA conjugates with disulfide linkers and peg spacers in between them so that the antibody and the double-stranded DNA are connected but also can be disconnected. And this method uses tetrazine and transcyclooctane reactions which are very high yield. These are shown here, tetrazine and transcyclooctane. Once the conjugates are created, you can use the antibodies to detect something using immunostaining, and then via DTT you can break those disulfide bonds, retrieve the DNA, and then run qPCR. The first step is to use the amines on lysines within the antibody to react with NHS tetrazine. NHS amine chemistry is high yield and can be done simply in borate buffer saline at pH 8.4 within 45 minutes to an hour at room temp. The next step utilizes both an enzymatic and chemical method. Double-stranded DNA shown here with blunt ends can be extended with azide DATP using an E. coli DNA polymerase lacking the three prime to five prime exonucleus activity. And that's depicted here. After the azide is added onto the DNA, then you can react it with DBCO TCO, which stands for dibenzocyclooctane peg transcyclooctane. So what you can see is this is a cyclooctane, which is used for quick chemistry. And this is a transcyclooctane, which can react with our tetrazine. For this method, we use SPAAC, which stands for stream promoted azide alkyne cycloaddition which is a very efficient technique for bioconjugation of the cyclooctane, which is part of DBCO, and an azide, which we had previously attached to our DNA. The peg linker in between the two of these, which is just a little dash here, will help make sure that steric hindrance isn't as much of a problem. And the final product is shown here. It's DNA with two transcyclooctenes, which you can use to react with the tetrazine. And that's the next step. We utilize the tetrazine, which is already attached to our antibody via those disulfide linkages, to make the final conjugate in high yield. You have to make sure that you quench any of this excess tetrazine that's inside these unconjugated antibodies because that might slowly react with the TCOs that are there on the conjugated antibodies over time. And to do this, we simply use an excess of 3,6-diphenyltetrazine for quenching. It's unlikely that this will cross-link antibodies, but it's always good to be sure. Gel electrophoresis can then be used to prove that the reaction completed and to determine how much DNA was added onto the antibody. And that's it. We've made our antibody oligo DNA conjugates so that we can use them in immunopcr and in other methods and what's cool is that these are cleavable so using DTT we can then break those disulfide bonds and as shown here you can qPCR up the product because it has the DNA in there that you can amplify and you can get very very good signal from very very little sample. What I really love about this technique is that it's got a cleavable linker. And all that chemistry is pretty simple and high yield. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope that you also like and subscribe to this channel because that's going to allow you to follow my different techniques and to keep learning new stuff every week as I present it. Talk to you later. This is Carter signing off.